You may know them for their wood glues, but did you know Titebond also has a complete selection of construction adhesives? Designed for a variety of applications, Titebond's adhesives make any building or home improvement project a breeze with their high-performing and durable formulas. These adhesives are trusted by the professional, providing squeak-free subfloor installations, long-lasting retaining walls, and even fastener-free feature walls. Check out Tightbond's construction adhesives at tightbond.com, including their newest award-winning adhesive, Tight Grab Plus. Our first question comes from Eric. Hello, FHB crew. I'm currently in the early planning stage of a new build. I recently purchased three and a half acres and I'm going to build a 50 by 81 foot barn dominium style home and shop in central Wisconsin, climate zone 6A. Why a barn dough? I can get a kit for the base structure for less than $40,000 and I watch a lot of ROR buildings on YouTube. <laughs> I like Kyle's uh, YouTube videos too. I, I think he does an exceptional job in the uh, influencer space, which is a tough road to walk. He says, I'm convinced I can build a high perform to high performance standards. I'll be the GC and can do as much of the work as possible myself. Roughly half, roughly half the building will be the house and the other half will be shop space and mechanicals. Seems a little light on that ratio, Eric. I'd, I'd go maybe two thirds, <laughs> one third. You mean two shop third, the house? Two third shop, one third house. Sounds, um, about, this, sounds a little better when you're talking about four thousand square feet. Well, I'm guessing Eric's uh, significant other is not as accepting as some of ours. Uh, She's and letting maybe... him build a barn, though. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a pretty accepting partner to me. <laughs> Oh, uh, hilarious. <laughs> It'll be a slab on grade and there'll be a proper foundation slash footers with the post bracketed on top of them. I'm going to see the walls with zip, possibly zip bar for a WRB and air tightness with comfort board and rock wool in the cavities. The cross section of wall I'm planning from the outside in is metal siding, zip sheathing, exterior girts with comfort board between the empty vertical spaces, six inch posts with rock wool between them, a one-way vapor barrier similar to Siga... Matt Marjex, I think is how you say that. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing Sega's uh, WRB or interior vapor control layer, excuse me. Um, and finally, another layer of interior girts with comfort board between them. I'm still thinking about how I want for the roof insulation. So that's for a future email attached in as a still illustration of my assembly. I have a million questions, but I'll ask two-ish in this email. My current plan is to do radiant heat in the six inch slab with an air to water heat pump. I'm wondering if I can also use the slab for radiant cooling. I'm planning on having an ERV, a whole building dehumidifier and a makeup air system for proper ventilation. Has anyone seen a slab used for cooling like this? The biggest downside I see is a potential condensing condensation forming on the slab. My backup plan would be to use hydronic radiant panels for cooling. My other question is how to deal with radon mitigation in a tight slab on grade house with continuous insulation. Does a properly applied continuous insulation under the slab also make the home airtight from the bottom? Since there will be gravel under the slab, can I just have several suction points with four inch PVC around the building going through the slab slash foam board and vapor barrier? Thanks for your great podcast. I've been listening for years. I love the banter and I hope you can address this on the show so I can be famous adjacent. Eric N. He says, sorry for the long email. I'm an engineer. <laughs> but he's an engineer who, who peppered his email with emojis. So, I mean, good, good for him. I'd like, let this be a lesson to all engineers out there. Throw a couple emojis in your email, please. It, it lightens up your prose. I got a question first here, and I want you all to weigh in briefly before we get to his real question. So would you guys consider this a barn dominium? I would consider this a slab on grade house with a workshop uh, attached to it. And the way he's describing detailing it, except from having metal siding, uh, it sounds a lot like a house and not a post frame building. Is that a fair neat I think thing that, you're nodding? I think that's a very astute observation of you, Patrick. Um, Because it's slab on grade. And I think that's the uh, the... The, the, the difference here brian what do you think am i, am well, I well you're making me wonder what the actual definition of a a barn, barn minimum is I, yeah and now now i you know there's lots of qualities i think the common qualities of barn, barn dominiums you know that I, I always thought sort of the the most i always thought the you know the most uh defining quality was the you know post and beam construction type um 
you know, with, with Gertz and often metal siding and stuff, but am I, do you think I'm wrong about that? No, I think, I think you're right, but I, I think, I think, right too. I think what Patrick's pointing out is that he's, he's trying to use insulation and air sealing strategies that are oh. developed for uh, regular platform wood yeah. framing that Patrick and I continually profess our undying love for. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, and and I've always maintained it, having built a post frame building myself. That the the transition between the floor and the walls is a tough one to get right in a post frame building, unless you're mm-hmm. pouring concrete out to the building perimeter, and uh, you know, which is sounds like what is going on here. So, yeah, I wonder I if he, I, I wonder if he would be better served in the long term to do a hybrid uh, wood framed building with a barn dominium style roof structure to it. Uh, I can't say that that's something I've ever seen done before, but I, I wonder if that uh, wall assembly is going to just prove to be overly difficult to execute well. Well, yeah. What are the? I mean, when you're doing all of this, right? When you're you're you have sheathing on the outside, you have you know vapor and air vapor retarder and air barrier on the inside. You have fully insulated cavities. What's the benefit of not just stick framing the house? Right. Right. I don't, the I'm, other, not sure, I'm not sure yeah. what it is. I, I'm not sure that there is one, especially if, if you're going to go with that slab anyway, you could just build a slab on grade house at that point. House, like, yeah. You know, with a, and if you wanted the large expansive space of a barn dominium, you could just use the barn dominium roof system. Yeah. Just use trusses. You, they can be 40 feet long if needed 50 even. So, um, we, so back to Eric, the cooling. Do we have to tell uh, Eric to go back to the drawing board and then come back to us with his new questions? I, I don't up? think I don't think we have to. I think we just I think we're telling him to give it a little bit more thought as to whether or not uh, the barn dominium is exactly what he. Yeah. Well, he's watching Kyle's videos and Kyle, right. Kyle really, you know, demonstrates well how to do things. And as you know, all of us here know, um, we, we've built in a lot of different ways. But when you are going to build something yourself, you do have to choose methods that you can do you have to choose things that you can do that are buildable and you know um you know when amy and i were building this house you know we had to choose things that two people could yeah could do walls that two people could raise and beams that two people could lift and all that kind of stuff those are decisions you have to make yeah that's a good point brian and i think that was lost a little bit in what patrick and i were we're throwing out there because i would imagine eric is looking at what kyle does on those videos and thinking well yeah, I, can I can do, do that. that. I, got I can this. do that yeah. alone. I can do this. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I would the, say in, the systems in, developed for post frame building are, are ideal for a big structure. It's just like, it's right. meant to, to build a yeah. big building. And uh, of course uh, there are advantages to systems that are not, don't have to be figured out. Yeah. And I, I would assume that Kyle's videos show some of this. I haven't watched a lot of his stuff, but he, Eric needs to think through some order of operations pieces because as he's, running his girts up his posts, you know, he may find that that's really the time period where he should be doing some of this insulation and and air sealing work as he goes up Mm -hmm. instead of waiting, you know, finishing one thing and then moving to the next. Uh, I wonder if there's some order of operations pieces that need to be thought out. And as Patrick put, especially that uh, intersection with the slab. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, to Eric's question about radiant cooling, uh, you know, these systems can work, but as you point out, Eric, the problem is uh, creating a condensing surface. And, um, uh, you know, the, the folks that I've talked to who have designed in or, you know, built houses with these systems, uh, you need to have a very tight humidity control. And I imagine that would be very difficult in the barn dominium with big openings like they are typically uh, constructed with and other uh, you know, challenging air sealing details inherent to a post frame building. Um, I do not think that would be the right choice. And I think a, uh, you know, forced air cooling system would be a far smarter option. You probably have more options in the, uh, living space part of the building, uh, because it'll be easier to condition, uh, because theoretically it'll be easier to make more airtight, um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if Barndo is the right place to be experimenting with radiant cooling. What do you guys think? Well, well I, I, oh, go ahead, Ian. I, I said while we were talking before we started recording that as a 
connoisseur of air conditioning, I, I don't know if I'm the right person to answer this question, <laughs> but uh, being someone from Wisconsin, I would be concerned that the radiant heat, radiant cooling mix will not be able to handle the wild temperature swings that we have. Uh, like this morning, it was 19 degrees out and frosting. Uh, a week ago, it was like 72. Mm. So I, I would be concerned that there's going to be some shoulder season issues uh, with being able to keep that big of a space comfortable. Well, and uh, I think you're alluding to the challenge with uh, using this giant mass of concrete to do heating right. and cooling because it's just not going to respond in any timely fashion, right? Yeah, I wonder if he needs or if he would be better served to look at uh, a hybrid system where he could have heat in the slab, but then also uh, having a ducted heat pump system uh, similar to what I use our multi-split system for uh, to kind of pick up the the main load of the heating and cooling, but then to have the slab for that bit of extra heat that you need in central Wisconsin from I don't know, mid-December through the uh, now-ish. July. You know? Yeah, July. <laughs> at the uh, at the Builder Show, we saw um, a new system that Warmboard has, um, is launching where they pair their, pro so Warmboard is, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a, it's a product for installing radiant in in floor radiant heating um, where the the tubes for the hydronic um, heating are are set into um, the subflooring the extra subflooring it's, it's it's all engineered by them they do it for you you install your subflooring mm -hmm. and the grooves are already there for your your hydronic tubing I think there's some you know metal transfer plates are part of the system I don't uh, not to get into that though but what they have done now is they have with the with the sort of coming of air to water heat pumps, they have worked, they're working with a company that makes an air to water heat pump so that uh, this one unit can both serve their, the floor for radiant heating. But what they do for cooling is they send the uh, water to an air handler and you have forced air for your cooling. So one unit that serves both the, the heating in the flooring and then the cooling through an air handler and, and forced air. It seemed like um, what you don't need to use. Uh, I think Warmboard makes good products, but you don't need to use Warmboard to engineer a system that, that could do that uh, with one exterior unit. Yeah. In a lot of ways, Warmboard is the Rolls Royce of uh, hydronic heating systems. Yeah. Isn't Rolls Royce owned by Fiat? I don't know if they're owned by Fiat. I, are they owned by like an Indian conglomerate like Tata? Yeah, that's or right. That isn't Tata Motors or something. Right? Yeah. Anywho, um, what about the radon uh, mitigation system? I, I, you know, I think that's uh, you're on the right track there, Eric. Um, but you got to monitor and learn how much radon you're dealing with to design a system. Am, am I off base in suggesting that? No, I, and where I am in Wisconsin, we don't have radon as an issue for you know whatever reason with our soil composition where I'm at, but you know, there's well-documented ways to do an under slab system. So I, th I think you can find something plug and play pretty easily. Brian, has Fine Home Building done a piece on radon mitigation systems uh, in the past? I can't remember. We definitely one. have. Um, I, I don't know how, how recent it, it's been. I think, you know, I, if I understood his question, right, he's trying to avoid having a pipe that comes up through the slab and exits, you know, up through the house and exits through the roof, right? He's trying, he's sort of wondering if he can mitigate any potential radon by basically by venting underneath the slab to daylight. Is that, am I, do you, is That's that what the way I read understanding it. too? Um, so I, I don't know enough about that to know if it can work because the radon systems, as I understand them work, you know, based on stack effect, um, and, and, and negative you know, allowing, pressure, right? Yeah, exactly. And allowing, um, you know, any air gas underneath the slab to, you know, you know, to es escape the slab and vent, you know, out through the, you know, out through a pipe that essentially goes through the roof. Um, the, the, the risk with radon in a new home is that 
I don't know if risk is the right word. It's much easier to install a system while you're building the house than later. So in much less disruptive. So if it's possible to install, you know, a, a pipe that starts on it, it's a very simple system, right? A rate on a passive rate, rate on mitigation system is eventually, event, essentially a perforated pipe set in some crushed stone beneath your slab. Um, and then, you know, a continuation of PVC pipe out through the roof to vent it. Um, that's, that's really all it is. It's, it's incumbent on the, the slab being airtight. Um, but otherwise that's all that is a passive system. And the idea is that if you put one in when you're building the house and you have significant radon that you can add a vent to a, a fan, you can add a, a fan with a motor to it to exhaust air faster. Um, there's a, is it the EPA? I think that has a, a radon map, um, that you can use to judge the likelihood of radon in your area. But what I, from what I've heard, you know, you can look at that map and you can be in an area where there's, it's, you're, you're unlikely to have a radon issue and still have one because you could literally have the right amount of bedrock just beneath your house to, uh, to cause a radon issue. So there's, it's not, uh, it's not a foolproof way of evaluating whether or not you need a system. Yeah, unless you're sitting on a gigantic pile of clay like I am that yeah. you know, requires a 500-foot-deep well. Right. <laughs> I uh, I think you need to test, Eric, and and figure out what you're dealing with before you you plan a system or you can spend a whole bunch of money for no good reason. But uh, as How Brian do you suggest, test, Patrick, before you have that, a house? Buddy? How do you test before you have a house? Uh, well, I would look at the geology maps as uh, oh, okay. was suggested, uh, and yeah. then um, other uh, neighboring structures uh, mm. ask folks if they've had problems, or I don't know if you gotcha. can talk to building officials about that. But. Yeah, yeah, and for for me, it, the, getting off the radon topic, but as a native Wisconsinite, I would caution Eric that uh, if he's buying his barn dominium kit from the gigantic Midwest uh, big box lumber store big box uh, and grocery store uh lumber uh appliance dealer yeah the, that that place a <laughs> little bit of everything clothing now they have uh, <laughs> be wary of the grade of metal that they are including because i did i bought the same type of kit from them and then upgraded the metal and some of the other parts uh, and i wouldn't be surprised if if that 40,000 turns into 60 or 70,000 uh, by the time you upgrade the metal, which is something you will want to do, their upgraded metal is, is a pretty good product. Uh, we were talking about Menards, if those, those of you who are wondering, uh, not a sponsor, but uh, amazing place. If you've never had a chance to be in one, go in one. If you're traveling, totally check it out because it's like the biggest slash a lumber yard slash grocery store I've ever been in. It's uh, they also have woodworking equipment, pet supplies, outdoor furniture, regular furniture now too, Patrick. It's, it's an amazing place. The, the like aisle of hardware, uh, you know, little nuts and bolts and screws and stuff uh, and uh, replacement parts and that kind of, it, it is uh, the biggest selection I've ever seen in my entire life. Like just, an entire pair of aisles dedicated to that stuff. Uh, well, I don't know, Eric, if that was helpful, but I hope you love your barn dominium and uh, keep us posted on what you decide to do. And uh, uh, I don't know. I, I hope we ratcheted up the banter good enough for him there. He was, he was, and I'm hoping it spurs banter. folks who uh, know more than us to write in with actual real yeah. advice about radiant cooling, especially <laughs> uh, that would be great. 